DJI's Mavic 3 has shaken up the drone world with pro-level features like a large sensor dual camera system in a relatively small body. However, potential buyers were equally shaken by the $2,200 starting price that goes way, way up if you want advanced features like ProRes video. Early footage shows that the camera is as good as we'd hoped, but users have also complained about the overly basic Fly app and key features like ActiveTrack 5 that won't be available until a January 2022 update. The question is, should you lay down that kind of money, keep your existing drone, or get something else altogether? I've had the standard model for a couple of weeks and been testing it with help from professional drone pilot Samuel Dujour. Here's what we found. There are two versions of the DJI Mavic 3, the standard and the Cine. The cameras and drone are the same for both, but the Mavic 3 Cine has a built-in 1TB SSD and Apple ProRes 422HQ video support that's highly desirable for professional film shoots. It also comes with a screen-equipped RC Pro remote, while the standard model includes the more basic RCN1 that requires a smartphone. It also costs $5,000, so you need a good reason to have those features. We're testing the mainstream standard model in the $3,000 Flymore combo, which includes three batteries, a charging hub, a set of ND filters, and a fancy bag that converts into a backpack. As with other Mavic models like the Air 2S, it folds into a compact, easy to carry size. It weighs almost exactly the same as the Mavic 2 Pro, so owners of that model wouldn't notice any difference. The arms are a bit longer to accommodate slightly larger propellers, so it has a slightly bigger wingspan than the Mavic 2 Pro. The camera module is bigger too because it houses a larger 4 thirds sensor camera plus a second telephoto camera. As a result, it protrudes a bit, leaving it more exposed to damage in a crash. Unlike the Mavic 2 Pro, it doesn't pan at all, but it now tilts up nearly 30 degrees, which can come in very handy. The camera locks when the drone is turned off, and it's protected by a muzzle-like harness that also covers the propellers. At 5000 mAh, the Mavic 3's battery is much larger than the 3850 mAh cell on the Mavic 2 Pro. That, along with some aerodynamic tweaks, gives it a huge 50% boost in range from 31 to 46 minutes. The 65 watt charger, now powered by USB-C, can fill a battery in about an hour and 50 minutes. Flight time does depend on the temperature and operation. In sunny skies and lowish 45 degree temperatures, with a mix of sport, cinema and normal flying, we were getting about 35 minutes of range with no sweat. That's not as well as you do in the summertime, but it's still really good. As a result, Samuel didn't feel the need to rush as he sometimes does with his Air 2S. For storage, the standard model has 8GB built in with a micro SD port for expansion. That 8GB is too small to be useful for anything but an emergency. Now let's get to the cameras. We'll start with the main one built in collaboration with Hasselblad that features a 24 mm lens and 4 thirds sensor. For reference, that's a third bigger than the one inch sensor on the last model and the same size as Panasonic's GH5 II sensor. You can shoot video at 5.1K at 50 frames per second or 4K at 60 frames per second using the entire width of the sensor with video extremely sharp. 4K at 120 frames per second is also possible with some cropping. A bit of cropping is a small price to pay to have such high speed footage though. It's just so useful on a drone whether you're shooting action, wildlife or scenery with moving water for instance. The large sensor offers better low light performance, more detail, improved dynamic range and just a more cinematic look in general. At the same time, the variable f2.8 to f11 aperture can better handle different lighting conditions. If you shoot in really bright sunlight a lot, I'd recommend the neutral density filter kit. ISO 1600 and 3200 yielded clean footage except in shadows and dark areas. 
However, the noise isn't bad, so it's easy to tamp down with some mild noise reduction. ISO 6400 is pushing it a bit, but it's still usable under the right conditions. DJI boosted the H264 data rate from 100 to 200 megabits per second, or 140 megabits per second with H265. As a result, quality is improved under most circumstances. The Mavic 3 uses Hasselblad's profile that's supposed to improve color accuracy. In general, it performed well across the color spectrum, even for human skin. Don't laugh, because this drone could get a lot of use for weddings, documentaries, and even films. It's so smooth that it can replace a crane or dolly for certain shots. To max out dynamic range and editing flexibility, you can shoot 10-bit D-Log footage. Taking that footage into the editing suite, I was able to bring out extra detail in highlights and shadows. One of the key new features of the Mavic 3 is the 162mm equivalent telephoto camera with a half-inch sensor. There's some confusion about zooming on the Mavic 3, so here's how it works. The main camera with no digital zoom is equivalent to a 24mm full-frame lens. When you go into explorer mode, zooming up to four times is done digitally with the main camera, but anything past about 2x starts to look a little janky. The 162mm 12 megapixel telephoto camera kicks in at a 7x zoom, offering 4K at up to 30 frames per second. It can digitally zoom up to 28 times, but again, quality really suffers. For the best looking footage, you'll need to stay between 1 and 2 times zoom, or go up to 7 times exactly. The Mavic 2 Pro, by contrast, has a 28mm lens with a 2x zoom. The Mavic 3 7x zoom is more extreme, but does open up some interesting creative possibilities. However, the optical quality on that camera isn't amazing, given the smallish sensor size. On top of that, you can only shoot JPEG photos. In terms of professional use then, it has limited value. I was a bit disappointed when I heard that the Mavic 3 had the same 20 megapixel resolution and less dynamic range than the Mavic 2 Pro. However, it more than compensates for that with the improved light sensitivity that effectively reduces noise. That said, you'll want to make sure your footage is properly exposed and possibly shoot using the raw DNG format. Doing so will give you a great deal of latitude to adjust images in Lightroom. The Mavic 3 is certainly DJI's easiest drone to fly thanks to some new automated tricks. As before, it offers three flying modes, including Cine for capturing smooth footage, standard and high-speed sport mode. You fly with DJI's simplified fly app rather than the GoFor app used with the Mavic 2 Pro. Camera settings like shutter, ISO, video resolution and so on are adjusted at the bottom right. For more advanced settings, you go to the three-dot menu at top right. It plays a jaunty tune on startup and is ready to go in less time than the Mavic Air 2S or 2 Pro. It maneuvers smoothly and predictably, helping pilots easily capture smooth footage under manual control. It's not quieter than the Mavic 2 series, but it has a slightly different tone that's a bit less annoying. So you can fly closer to people or wildlife without disturbing them as much. It's also faster, hitting speeds up to 42 miles per hour in sport mode. To avoid obstacles, it's covered with omnidirectional sensors all around. The Fly app shows potential obstacles, making them easier to avoid. The APAS 5 system, meanwhile, lets you program the Mavic 5 to either stop or bypass obstacles. We ran it through a gauntlet of hazards, including gnarly trees, power lines, and more. It either stopped or dodged them, depending on the option we set. They can also be disabled in all modes, if you dare. The return to home feature brings the drone back when the battery runs low, though many pilots will prefer to return manually as it's quicker. Still, it's nice to have the option. One key feature that's unfortunately not coming until January is Active Track 5. As with previous systems, it's designed to follow you around while you bike, windsurf, or do other activities. The latest version can track subjects no matter which way they're moving and continue tracking even if they move out of frame. Obviously though, we didn't get a chance to test that. It also lacks panorama mode to create stitched photos and quick transfer for rapid video or photo transfers over Wi-Fi. The Mavic 3 delivers where it counts the most with professional image quality and stabilization that allows for insanely smooth shots. It's not perfect though. 
Those same users may find the telephoto camera to be pretty useless compared to an optical zoom. They may also wonder why the standard model comes with a basic controller and limited fly app, considering the relatively high price. Are these factors that important? I'm giving the final word to Samuel, the professional photographer and certified pilot who owns multiple DJI drones. Yes, it's a very interesting drone. And yes, I would be interested in buying it because it has a sensor that's larger and performs at a higher level. So it's a big step up in terms of image quality. The drone is also extremely stable, even in wind. So you feel like you have a tripod in the sky, which is really impressive. It has some flaws for sure, but those are outweighed by the image quality benefits. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And for more on technology, check out Engadget.com.